Hi everybody and welcome to my new video blog, Inform the Swarm. Whether you're watching this on the YouTube platform or whether you're watching this on the BitTube platform, I welcome you to drop by and just take in some of the little snippets of what's in my thought process. So today I'm going to be talking about the UK's economy, the UK's banking system and what that represents with the American banking system and what that also represents with the European economy. Now, recently over the last couple of days, We've had a couple of alarm bells ringing in the UK, a uh, couple of things on the me local media that's come up. Uh, one of the local radio stations that I was listening to, it stated that one of the banks in the UK, the TSB, I'll just pull it up now on the computer. Here it is. Uh, fraud alert as TSB customers see thousands taken from their accounts. TSB customers have hit out at the banks after thousands of pounds were apparently taken from their bank accounts and they had to spend several hours queuing on the telephone before they could report it. And this is like kind of just days before another major thing happens and that is British, the British Airways. Bank details of more than 400,000 British Airways passengers have been stolen in one of the more serious data breaches to hit the UK company. Now, this is as we're moving into or being pushed into a digital currency era where they're more and more trying to take us away from the paper currency, silver, gold, and other metallic. Uh, currencies and coinage and they're trying to push us forward into this digital era where everything's going to be done through the digital banking system now just over a matter of a couple of days in the UK we're seeing that the British Airways passengers 400,000 of them have had the personal information stolen and the British Bank TSB has, has also had fraudulent hacks and thousands of pounds taken out of customers accounts or customers accounts frozen and it's kind of making me think um, how secure is this digital era how secure is the digital currency so just to tell a little personal story about what happened uh, to me and a friend of mine only a couple of weeks back we normally go out on a Sunday morning we meet up we have a breakfast together and we talk about what's gone on through the week and then we nip to the local supermarket and he grabs his shopping. I'll have a wander around with him in a chat, see if there's anything there that I fancy. I head off to work and he generally goes home. And this particular Sunday, uh, when we were out, we'd had something to eat, we'd have our breakfast, we'd have a bit of a chat. And we headed on down to this local supermarket. And as we're wandering around, he's putting all his items in his trolley. And we get up to the cashier and he's ready to cash out. And the cashier turns around to him and she says, uh, well, I think it was a he actually, he turned around to him and he says, I'm sorry, but we can't take any card payments. The whole internet's down. We can't take card payments. We can only take cash. So luckily for him, he rummages around in his pocket and he's got just enough cash to actually make the purchase of the items that he put away in his trolley. But as he's doing this and as he's paying to go through the checkout, there's loads of other people just pushing the trolleys to one side that can't pay for the produce because they're using the bank cards they're using that fake digital currency to pay for their produce the internet's gone down so they can't get the money in so basically this kind of like struck a tune with me and I kind of thought to myself hang on a minute if this can happen, I mean, obviously it was a, a very localised incident. It only happened in that town and it probably only happened in that one shop, that one supermarket. But primarily it could happen at any time, anywhere. The banks have been hacked. British Airways have been hacked. It's proving to me that digital currency isn't yet a safe place to have a lot of my money invested and I don't just mean on say like cryptocurrency like Bitcoin 
by coin and such but I just mean being held within that digital infrastructure if somebody can break into British Airways and steal 400,000 passengers personal information and the TSB can be hacked the apps can be hacked and people can be frozen from their accounts and thousands of pounds stolen from their accounts what's to say that that's not going to happen to my savings so what I'm trying to basically say in this little video blog is since that had happened I've come to realize that I need to diversify my savings and I think a lot of people in the UK should look forward to this and they should look forward to thinking about diversifying their savings as well I know that there's a lot of people out in the US that stack gold and silver and I've seen a lot of videos on that and I've read up on a lot of it and I just kind of want to break that myth as well that people who are you know collecting silver coins silver one ounce coins and half ounce coins a lot of these people are not doing it to make a quick buck they're not doing it to ride the silver on the way up and make a massive profit out of these coins well that's not in my opinion anyway my opinion to what a lot of these people are doing that are buying silver like myself now uh, are investing more and more into more diverse savings I believe that a lot of these people are putting money into silver to safeguard their assets to safeguard their savings because this physical metal whether it be silver or whether it be gold is primarily far better than paper money paper currency bonds and especially this digital currency you know I'm not saying that cryptocurrency doesn't play a part but I just think the diversity of having your savings spread across a broad spectrum is going to be far safer for you than it is if you're holding it in one situation in one digital currency in a bank account you know because bank accounts especially now there's people saying that we're on the verge of another collapse an even bigger collapse that could take down the whole infrastructure globally not just on uh, an individual country's level each bank has become intertwined within each other whether it be the European banks whether it be American Japanese Chinese you know the Spanish banks intertwined that uh, have now may have a lot of debt foreclosing on them European banks like the Deutsche Bank were they're pulling out of certain countries you know and with the UK as we come further into the closure the exit of us from the European market as well you know if we do exit and we do get what we need to get from that therefore we'll be standing alone again with our monetary system as opposed to backing the European market as well so I'm just trying to say that I think it's going to be far better to diversify your savings just in case something does happen if if say for instance the banking system collapses only for a short period of time it only has to be a matter of days this kind of paper currency is what's going to keep you afloat for a matter of months now if it was to crash for any longer period of time than that then that's where this silver saving system and this gold saving system comes in locking away your wealth into a a, a more um, tangible asset when it comes down to the fact that it's going to be far better than a digital currency that could get wiped out from the internet could get taken by hackers or could just even if the internet if the electricity goes down for, for the sake of it you can't use your cards you can't use your ATM machines you can't purchase things online bonds are going to be seemingly to be exactly the same because bonds no longer unlike these ones these paper bonds which I retain the actual paper documentation to prove that I've got money within them bonds with those um, cords to prove that that money is mine even that system 
now is being taken over by a computer system. No longer do they send out the paper bonds. What they now do is they hold those bonds online digitally. So <clears throat> as we move further forward, as we get pushed further forward into using a digital currency, or we use a digital era, these things that we can diversify into the precious metals and into keeping a bit of paper money, just a block, just a block of paper money, just tucked away to one side. Now, as the digital currency is still running, then this is what we'll use. You know, use your digital currency, do your bank transfers and your bank transactions, pay for your bills and your mortgage and your food, and your car insurance and things like that. With that, keep a little bit held back into a bond if you possibly can, just to have it somewhere different than in say like a, a bank account. I also hold a slight bit of money in post office accounts because post offices are now seeing that niche in the market. Building societies and banks are shutting the <clears throat> smaller branches down all over the place, especially in the UK. I've just noticed that in the last couple of months, uh, one of my own personal banks, the Royal Bank of Scotland, have taken away a couple of the local branches. It's now where you have to go deeper into town, into the main town centres, just so that you can actually put money in. They are saying that you can use a painting method at a post office. So the post offices are now regaining a little bit of what they had back in the yesteryear. They're now starting to do mortgages once more. They're starting to do savings accounts. So basically they're going to be taking over the small branches of the banks, saving into the post offices. But still in that instance, it's going to still become a digital currency. You're still going to be trading in that fake digital monetary system. But it's holding some physical metal, some physical silver, some physical gold. You're going to lock a little bit of your savings away. And as I'm trying to specify within this, it's a, a diverse portfolio of your savings that you need to be getting into. I think the UK at the moment are getting into troubled times. I do think that, you know, further into the future, we're going to be looking at some of the banking systems collapsing and how it's going to play out. I don't fully know right now. I don't think anybody fully knows right now. People are speculating another stock market crash, even bigger and badder than the last one. Just want to get it out there to people in the UK to diversify, you know, your savings more. I think that, you know, silver stackers, you know, especially when you look at UK, at the USA silver stackers, they are just doing it to store their wealth. I don't think they're doing it, a lot of them, I don't think they're doing it to ride that wave up and to actually make a profit. At the present moment in time, silver is so low in price that it, it seems stupid not to collect some of this silver to lock it into wealth because as it's been stated in so many times, technology relies on a lot of these products. The silver that's on circuitry boards, the gold that's on circuitry boards that's in mobile phones, that's getting used up. So it only stands to reason. So as much as they can pull out of the ground, our electronical industry is taken away. There's far less now to actually be saved and stored as wealth. It just stands to reason why it's as low as it is. It should be snapped up, you know, just to put it away for, for another day, for a rainy day, so to speak, as opposed to keep holding it in that digital currency. That's pretty much basically what I wanted to uh, speak about today. Um, I think I'll, uh, I'll jump off now and then the next video I'll do, I'll, I'll unbox a little bit more silver and, and I'll explain why I've changed my thought process on buying silver and what kind of silver I actually purchase nowadays comparable to what I was purchasing, you know, basically panic buying, bulk buying the silver uh, in that stacker kind of mentality, whereas I've kind of changed my attitude now on what I buy in the silver market and I'll talk you through that now when I unbox this we'll go on to the next video I'll unbox this and I'll talk to you about 
why I've changed my actual strategy on the silver side. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later when I unbox this lot.